Good morning to the panelists. Good morning to the public. Good morning to those who are joining us only now. Uh, be welcome. The, this is the third round table of the second day of the conference calling the shots, sports and the European green evolution. Uh, we've already had a pretty busy and very interesting morning. Uh, if for uh, any reason, you, um, I'm speaking to the public. Uh, if for any reason your camera or microphone is on, please switch it off. It shouldn't be, but sometimes it happens with Zoom. Um, there's a Q&A section. I don't know if it's below this video on the right, on the left. It only depends on the way you use Zoom. You can put all your questions there uh, so that we can answer it at the end of the round table or the panelists um, they can answer to you directly. If you want to tweet about this conference, please use the hashtag green sports with an S at the end. Uh, when you connect, if you can put the country you're from, we're always interested in saying the countries that are connecting with us. You can put that in, a key, in the Q&A session. And uh, just to remind you that we have a graphic facilitator, Maha. She's going to draw about everything we speak about in this, in this round table. Um, as for the languages we speak, we're going to speak mainly in English, but, uh, but you have, in case uh, we speak French, you have a translation into English. You, you also have a translation into French for our French viewers who can't speak English. We have great translator, Benedict and François Xavier. A big thank you to them. And as you can see, we also have a translation into international uh, sign language. Here we go. We are ready for this, uh, this conference. So let me introduce you to the panelists of this session. Valerio Giovannini, Public Affairs Specialist at the UEFA. Buongiorno, Giovanni. Barbara Moschini, Italian Hello, Federation. Italian Football Federation, um, Amandine Sangla, Head of Sport and Sustainability at the French Minister of Sport, and Rika Rakic, Head of Sustainability Strategy International Biathlon Union. Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, maybe before we begin, uh, we're going to have a quick introduction, introduction made by yourself so that we all know who we are. If you, if you want to begin, Valerio. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you very much. First of all, hello, everyone. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm Valerio Giovannini, Public Affairs Specialist uh, at UEFA. In, uh, in my introduction, actually, I would like to, uh, to give you like a few information on UEFA efforts on European projects and, uh, and partnership, and starting from the very beginning, which is in 2017, when at UEFA, we, uh, we started uh, with a service assistance to help our national associations to uh, work more on European projects. Why did we launch this service? We did it because we felt the need that uh, our members would need uh, assistance because European uh, projects are very difficult to access. There is not only the project application has to be uh, very good, but also the partnership. Uh, that we build has to be ambitious enough to reach the objective. So that's the reason why we uh, we launched the service. And uh, I have to say that so far we have been successful because more than half of our members are now participating in the European projects, 30 actually. And we have 35 European projects ongoing on different priorities. They mainly relate to social responsibility issues and uh, the protection of environment, which is the, the topic of today's meeting, is one of our main uh, focus area. And uh, uh, I personally uh, have very good memories when it comes to uh, protection of environment and uh, European projects, because this is the first European project that we have uh, is exactly on the protection of environment. It's the life tackle project that will be uh, presented afterwards by the, the by Barbara by the Italian Football Association. But I would like only to mention that this project aims at uh, reducing the environmental impact of football matches, or actually of major sporting events. And this is the first time that uh, in the life program, we all know it's the, the main European program for protecting the environment. And for the first time, sport was supported by 
uh, the life program. So this is a, this was a very good achievement for us to bring sport in a very ambitious program like uh, like life. Uh, when it comes to uh, the programs that relate more uh, with sport, for example, the Erasmus Plus Sport Program, uh, we have four ongoing projects, and uh, of course I will not give you the details of all uh, of the projects where we are working on, but I would like to mention that we are working on the project named the SDG Striker. And uh, in the framework of this action, our goal is to connect the goals of the United Nations, the, the Sustainable Development Goal, with the UN, uh, with the European Union priorities for the protection of the environment. And we will do that through three pilot actions that will be carried out by three UEFA members that will aim to reduce the impact of sports organization on the environment while implementing their activities. And finally, uh, I would like to mention also the Green Food Project, which is a project supported by the Horizon 2020 uh, program. And I mentioned the name of the program because uh, this is not so usual to see sports organizations working on, on the Horizon 2020, which is usually a program for universities and research institutions. So here we are working on, on a sport action because we aim to reduce the energy consumption of sport uh, buildings and the sport facilities. And we will do that through the direct involvement of uh, football stakeholders because we will launch a crowdfunding campaign and uh, football supporters, football fans will be the main actors uh, that will participate in raising funds for uh, making this intervention. So of course, it's not only about the funds that will be raised, but is more on the campaign that will be behind the project and to raise the awareness that on supporters that will become active uh, players in, uh, in this initiative. Uh, finally, uh, just uh, would like to mention that participating in the European projects on, on environment, but on, on a general level is not only for the funds received and uh, for the very good objectives that we, that we can reach, but is also for the partnership that we are building. So sports stakeholders are now working, in our case, our members with NGOs, universities, uh, governments, and that's not, they're not the usual actors with which they relate in uh, performing the activities. So it's a very good achievement uh, as well. But in any case, we will hear more, as I mentioned, from the, from the Italian FA on the direct involvement on a project, on an environmental project. So sorry for the long introduction, but... <laughs> View, uh, like an overview of, uh, of what UEFA does in, uh, in the context of uh, EU projects and um, green sports. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let's move to you, Barbara, if, if you can tell us more about the, the projects uh, Valerio was talking about. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thanks to Sir Frider for the invitation and Valerio Giovanni from UEFA as well, because uh, as he mentioned, I would like just to be the, the witness of uh, how this new uh, service uh, of UEFA is working, because since uh, 2017, we have the support of personally of Valerio Giovannini and uh, now a big staff supporting him because it's a huge uh, quantity of works and uh, and meetings that you have to, to, to do. And I have to say that before the Football Association has uh, experience, I have to say that it's no uh, our mainly activity to apply to calls from uh, European Commission. So that's why we receive a, a, a huge, a big support from UEFA, because at the beginning we work on, for example, of just exchange, uh, uh, professionalism uh, as with the, the Spanish Football Association, we, we share experience with other coaches, with other uh, staff from the Football Association, but it's completely different now how our involvement in projects actually has, uh, Valerio was mentioning, uh, we are a partner for Tackle, that is the main one. That's why I have been invited today just to talk about the new guidelines and the outputs of the project. But above all, we are partner as well for a, a sport hub, sports hub Europe. That is a, an, another uh, project. We are just associated partners, but we are, it's a project on uh, environment as well. And we are partners of the Project Funds Matters on the involvement of all um, um, supporters, so with clubs and another football association, so the Israel one. But uh, the, the main one, we are applicants, so we are leading partner, it's on the inclusion. So again, we are working uh, deeply on, um, on uh, 
responsibility, social responsibility, and inclusion, environment, uh, and involvement and supporters are the main area in which DFA it's really interesting to, to, to share experience, to find new synergies at national and international level. And I have to say that thanks to uh, the support of UEFA, we are in touch uh, with the uh, you know, academic partners as our uh, university and uh, NGO, that it's really difficult for a football association to analyze and to identify the right one. So thanks to their, their help, it's more easy for us to be in touch. And even for us, the first time we are leading partners, so to apply alone and to be leading of a consortium of a new group of work with other football association that we, we, we invited to, to join us in a new, new project. But I will have the opportunity to talk more in detail, deep in detail for the tackle project on environment management in sport, in particular in football. Uh, we can't we can't hear you i i believe oh sorry i, I had switched that off sorry uh thank you baba amandine if we can move to you maybe if you can if we can have a short introduction of who you are and what you do oui donc euh, ben, je, je vais profiter de, de la traduction pour bon, m'exprimer en français euh, pour Très le bien. coup <rire> donc, euh, donc Amandine Singla, je suis responsable de la mission sport et développement durable auprès du ministère chargé des sports et en fait la principale mission euh, de, 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 ce, de ce bureau en fait de cette entité est d'accompagner euh, tout l'écosystème sportif français dans sa transition euh, écologique donc pour ça en fait on on croit beaucoup à ce qui a été dit un petit peu depuis, depuis deux jours sur le développement de dynamiques, de synergies euh, communes, de partenariats euh, stratégiques, que bien sûr qu'on promeut, qu voilà, sur des initiatives qu'on peut porter nous-mêmes avec une dynamique autour d'une charte des 15 engagements éco-responsables, là voilà, où on a tous les organisateurs d'événements euh, sportifs internationaux qui sont avec nous pour travailler sur ces sujets-là. Et en fait, euh, nous, on pense que voilà, ces, ces dynamiques-là, il faut qu'elles soient euh, multi-acteurs, qu'on décloisonne avec euh, voilà, les autorités, le mouvement sportif, les universitaires, les ONG, les pratiquants, mais qu'on le décloisonne à tous les niveaux, c'est-à-dire tant au niveau le plus local qu'au niveau euh, européen, pour euh, du coup avoir une forme de, de, de dynamique et de synergie euh, commune avec un, un, un but et un cap qui nous entraîne euh, tous. Merci. Uh, thank you very much, Amandine. Uh, Rika, if we can move to you, just the same thing, uh, an introduction of who you are and what you actually do at the International Biathlon Union. Yes, happy to do that. Thank you very much, Sir Friday Europe and the French Ministry of Sports for this opportunity to participate in these uh, uh, very, very insightful sessions the last two days. Uh, my name is Rika Rakic and I am the head of sustainability at the International Biathlon Union. I believe many of you know the sport of biathlon. It's an international Olympic winter sport, uh, combining cross-country skiing, extremely demanding endurance sport, and uh, marksmanship uh, shooting, which is a very technical sport. So that makes for a very um, surprising combination uh, when it comes to our competitions. Now, obviously, sustainability and the environment um, and climate are extremely important issues for us as a winter sport. And it's been mentioned a few times, uh, especially the previous two roundtables spoke about us in particular as an IF, but also our sport being very subject to climate uh, change and seeing the impact already. So in a way for us, engagement in this area really is almost a matter of survival, um, if not the social uh, uh, license to operate because we also have fans who tell us that this is an area they want us to take action in. So um, that's what we have done and I'd like to discuss it a little bit in more detail later. Uh, as for myself, I'm a Finn born on skinny skis, so I'm actually working on a sport that is very close to my heart and, and I'm happy to be part of this discussion today. Thank you so much. Yeah, we will move now quickly to examples of the, the existing action uh, EU funded action initiatives 
uh, addressing the, the this need for greener sports. Um, I don't know, Valerio, Barbara, how how you you want to do? If maybe Barbara wants to go deeply uh, in the, into the example, or do you want to do it yeah. yourself, Valerio? Well, actually, I, um, I I gave an overview of our projects also in, uh, in the introduction that it was, uh, as you could notice, very long. But uh, in any case, I'm here if we want to, to, you know, to go into details of the other action. But I believe that the life cycle project is a very interesting example. So, Barbara, I leave you the floor. I'm okay. sure. Okay. Thank you, thank you, Valerio. Just to just to remind everybody that there is a Q&A session uh, section. Uh, you can put all your questions there. I guess the panelists uh, will answer, if not during the round table, they will answer to you directly on this on this section of the Q&A. So please feel free to, to send all your questions and we will go back to you, Barbara, if you can tell us uh, in, in details what is the, the, okay. the action you, you're actually ha having on the field. I'm honored to talk about tackle life tackle project because it's a huge program. It started in September um, 18 and it will last uh, next March because we received the uh, six months uh, of delay from the European Commission caused to the pandemic situation that we are living. So the problem that we had to change, we are obliged to change many different uh, actions that we we had to to deliver. And uh, basically, I have to say that thanks again to, to UEFA, we'll be in touch with the Sweden and Romanian Photo Association to, to, to share this, uh, this project. And the consortium is, uh, is made up uh, by the leading uh, partner, that is the uh, Institute of um, Superiore Santana of Pisa, that are really a, a long experience in, uh, in this area. And we have as a communication platform, Euractive, based in Brussels. And ACR Plus as well, basic in, based in Brussels uh, as association of cities and regions that help us so much to spread our projects. And uh, we have two uh, municipality companies from uh, um, Porto, Lipo, and um, Amio in Genoa. So we have, uh, I have to say, a very um, round, uh, a very overview, so general from different point of view that is uh, exciting for our project. That's why. Thanks to the support uh, again of UEFA, we were able to identify more than 18 good practices. And uh, we selected, uh, I don't know, about 300, 500 pages of different actions that we, we found uh, on sports. Um, sports even has uh, uh, rugby, uh, has uh, Olympic Games, uh, but even, for example, uh, Milano um, 2015. So, it's a, a general overview that we collected all these good practice. Again, thanks to UEFA, we spread to the 55 football associations that are affiliated to UEFA. And uh, now during Euro 2020, we were able to implement few of the actions that have been identified uh, thanks to Santana Institute with our uh, manager at the Olympic Stadium that it's one of our, our 11 uh, pilot stadium. The pilot stadium involved in the project are not just from uh, partners because uh, uh, thanks to LCR Plus and all the, you know, um, the contact that we have, uh, we involve other clubs, uh, other stadium that uh, they listened, they, they knew the project, so they were interested to be part of this. And uh, we implemented different actions in, uh, in the stadium, 11 stadium all around in, uh, in Europe. I have to talk about the Italian experience that I follow personally with the, the Olympic Stadium of Rome that in a few days will be yeah. host, uh, different matches uh, and we are honored to host uh, the opening one and uh, on, uh, on uh, the next day. So it will be very close. So we are really <laughs> on our report. Everybody is excited. Yeah, so the activities, it's a huge work, but it's an amazing experience, I have to say. And uh, we, uh, we selected the among all the actions that Santana identified, we selected with the, the manager of the Parco dello Stadio Olimpico because we, they include in the stadium, in the park, even the organization for swimming, uh, World Cup or rugby, uh, Sei Nazione, the Six Nations, or for example, uh, lately on, Ma on May, we had the um, Internazionale of Tennis, and so they have different sports included in this, in this area. 
And uh, we decided to analyze just three actions, the main actions as the uh, different collection of plastic and the reuse of plastic just to uh, approach the circular economy because with this plastic in particular, we analyzed and we identified the different organizations that are able to, um, to work with plastic and to rebuild seats that are homologated and they have you know, the, the, the characteristic and the criteria that have to be um, allowed by international matches. So again, it's the kind of uh, actions thanks to a tackle uh, project to collect in a different way. So separated plastic to, to take plastic, to grow to the company that are used to, to rebuild seats that are um, necessary for the stadium that they have to change between 600 and 800 seats uh, for, for here. And uh, another important action that we are implementing after Euro 2020, because we are really <laughs> busy with other activities, uh, with, uh, with an engineer, uh, he is uh, just uh, taking into consideration to uh, use rainwater. So the reuse of rainwater collected from the roof of the, the stadium, that it seems to be That's the great. Largest. We talked about it. Yeah, we yeah. talked about that a few minutes ago. That's great. Yes, the largest surface of stadium in Europe and the, the quality of water we saw with the experts, the experts, that it's really, really high. So it's great for the pitch watering, not just of the field of play, but even all the green area that are, are around the Olympic Stadium. So I could talk of even, uh, for example, about the FA governance. Uh, we had uh, more than 13 uh, interviews with our head of different uh, area that are involved uh, on uh, environmental management. And uh, we organized with Santana different webinars just to improve uh, our uh, you know, activities at the FA. And uh, during the, the Euro 2020, we, we organized Casa Zuri, that it's a kind of headquarter in which we welcome uh, our supporters and our stakeholders. Uh, and we, we organize a different uh, workshop. And I've been invited to organize a workshop on sustainability. And again, I will be able to, to talk about our projects. And uh, our uh, media center that it's uh, in, uh, in the technical center in Coverciano, close in Florence in which our um, uh, team will uh, prepare, you know, the matches. Uh, there you have the um, Italian media. And again, in that area, I would like to, to implement and to talk about uh, the, the life tackle project and to implement uh, a management of environment, uh, the greenest that we can. <laughs> Thank you, Barbara. Since, since we can short summary. <laughs> since since we can unfortunately go go deeper into this uh, this project, maybe you can put in the Q and A session the link to the website so that the people who are actually following us can have a look at it. For sure, I can put the link of the website, which you, they can find all the guidelines. Uh, yeah, the many, all the activities, all video Thank for you. the raising campaign that we did. So all our work that, uh, from the beginning it's on, on our web, uh, life tackle uh, website. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I let I let you do that. We move to we, we move on to Amandine. Amandine, if you want to talk about the the current project, the current EU uh, supported project. Hello. Déjà, on ne soutient pas en propre euh, les, un, un projet euh, européen. On a pas mal de projets euh, européens où euh, nos, nos, nos fédérations, nos entités euh, sont partenaires ou, ou les portent, pour le coup. Euh, ce que je voudrais souligner, ils sont surtout sur des aspects euh, éducatifs ou euh, comment, euh, finalement, euh, on, on donne euh, des, des, des billes ou en tout cas des, des contenus pour les éducateurs sportifs hein, afin de mieux appréhender ces sujets, les inclure euh, voilà, dans les, les, les séances et les entraînements pour, pour les jeunes, que ce soit sur des volets sport de nature ou même sur comment on, on travaille sur l'empreinte environnementale au niveau des clubs, des clubs locaux. Donc ça, c'est des sujets qu'on qu qu suit. Je voudrais juste... Déjà féliciter en tout cas voilà, Barbara et, et l'UEFA pour le travail qui est, qui est mené sur le, le, le fait de porter des projets européens et de faciliter l'accès aux projets, au financement européen des acteurs. On sait que ce n'est pas facile. On a aussi un point d'information en France pour, pour accompagner, mais en tout cas, ça contribue à toute une synergie et à un besoin de, 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 
d'expliciter et de faciliter en fait, euh, l'accès à ces divers financements. On a parlé d'Erasmus+, c'est typiquement pour du sport. On a parlé du financement Life, c'est des, des financements purement environnement et, et, et climat. Et en fait, voilà, d'un point de vue qui est, qui est le mien, qui est celui finalement d'une administration, euh, c'est de se dire comment on, on crée tous ensemble une culture euh, commune du projet européen, comment on la partage euh, tous ensemble et comment, au-delà de ces divers projets, parce qu'il y en a de plus en plus, et c'est tant mieux, on en voit de plus en plus passer sur des projets européens sur, sur l'environnement, comment, à un moment donné, on partage toutes ces expériences et toutes ces innovations qui sont créées et partagées à travers, à travers l'Europe. Et quelle plateforme nous permet ça Peut-être la plateforme de sur Rider à un moment donné. Mais du coup, voilà, moi, ce, qui, ce que je trouve pertinent, intéressant, et comment on se sert de tout ça pour finalement co-construire ensemble un cadre commun qui fait partie du plan de travail de, de, de la Commission européenne et comment on, on s'appuie sur, sur toutes ces expériences locales pour, à un moment donné, co-construire quelque chose qui nous engage tous, que ce soit de l'organisateur de l'événement jusqu'au pratiquant, finalement, dans sa responsabilité à lui, en passant, bien sûr, par l'État et les autorités qui légifèrent à un moment donné. Donc, du coup, tout ça se, se questionne et, et ce dont on parle aujourd'hui et la manière dont l'exprime le, l'UEFA et, et Barbara est quelque chose voilà, d'intéressant dans, dans des synergies communes qu'il faut qu'on qu 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 encourage, en tout cas, et qu'on qu partage. Je, je reviens d'ailleurs sur euh, votre liste d'engagements qui a été réalisée et je, je pense notamment à, à ce que nous a dit Madame la Ministre euh, hier sur l'importance de, de s'appuyer aussi sur les jeunes, de leur faire, de leur faire prendre conscience à eux et c'est une grande part de, de votre travail, euh, il me semble, au ministère des, des Sports en France. Oui, tout à fait. On a, voilà, c'est ce que je disais, cette synergie avec ce cadre commun de 15 engagements éco-responsables qu'on a travaillé avec des organisateurs d'événements, qu'on a décliné à des gestionnaires d'équipements. Euh, du coup, qu'on a décliné même sur les centres d'entraînement euh, pour les sportifs de, de, de haut niveau, avec cette volonté d'avoir voilà, 15 engagements, alors il y en a 6 sur l'environnement, mais euh, qui, de, de réduction euh, de, de l'impact, mais aussi tout un volet de sensibilisation ou d'éducation, parce qu'il voilà, y a un besoin dès le plus jeune âge de, 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 de prendre le sujet à bras le corps et... et euh, de se dire voilà, que les jeunes d'aujourd'hui sont les, les, les adultes de, de demain et qui seront aux manettes à un moment donné pour, pour driver le, le sujet. Mais en tout cas, cette idée, c'est le message un peu d'aujourd'hui, c'est de se dire qu'on a une dimension un peu, un peu collective, on a voilà, un socle commun à trouver au niveau européen. Et, et, et du coup, comment voilà, on, on le fait tous ensemble Alors voilà, ça peut être une charte, ça peut être d'autres types d'outils, mais comment on s'appuie sur, sur ça pour avoir une vraie synergie collective et pas... Un, euh, une somme d'action euh, en, en silo. Chacun dans son coin. Voilà, voilà les, la conférence de ces deux jours euh, est un peu le reflet de, de, de ça, c'est de se dire que sur chaque table ronde, finalement, on a eu toute une pluralité d'acteurs pour euh, débattre sur ces, sur ces sujets. Et c'est en ce faire-là qu'il faut, qu faut, qu faut, qu faut poursuivre. Et euh, voilà, les financements euh, des projets européens sont un levier assez extraordinaire pour ça, puisqu'on peut mettre autour de la table divers pays et, euh, et toute une pluralité d'acteurs pour, pour co-construire euh, sur ces sujets. Merci, Amandine. Uh, we, we move back to you. Rika, can you tell us a bit more about uh, the projects you have, the projects you're actually leading? Sure, yes. Um, so we don't have an example of an EU-funded project at the moment, but I'm very excited to hear about the experiences that uh, the UEFA and, and Barbara in Italy have had, because we are actually in the process of applying for one. And just to underline that importance of partnerships, uh, that project that we are hopefully uh, able to start shortly with the EU support is a, a cooperation with two other IFs and their national entities. So I'm um, looking forward to being able to report on that next year, maybe at the second edition of this Hopefully. conference. <laughs> exactly. But just to speak to some current projects, um, there's been some mention about a lot of sports organizations getting involved and doing things, but, but at the same time, especially in the area of climate, we don't really have time to lose and it's important to be effective and uh, just to speak to the fact that the, uh, measurement I think is one of the things that we've taken really seriously we've started in our own strategy implementation we have a 10-year strategy approved last year and our first step was really to try to measure the baseline where we are and uh, that's what we've been working on uh, now more recently in areas such as uh, the launch of a new digital ecosystem and before we launch it we want to know what the impact will be so that we can actually with some knowledge to say what do you have to do in terms of the 
claim that it is a climate neutral uh, app and digital ecosystem. So um, the Stuttgart who mentioned that it's important to know what you're actually doing and what the impact is. Um, so uh, specifically then uh, getting uh, implementing the strategy. It's all nice to have a policy on paper and a long strategy with lots of pages, but it's only so good as when you start that implement it. Obviously, for us as a sport organization and an IF, um, it's important to work within the structures. And sometimes the structures can be a little bit of a hindrance, but they can also, um, if you know how to work within them, they are um, a tool for you to do what you're trying to do. And as an IF, obviously we have different tools to, to use. And sometimes, um, and I just like to say, I, I totally agree the previous uh, panelists that mentioned the importance of financial incentives, uh, but because I don't think we can get ar around that. Um, but for us as an intersport, mobility is the most important uh, CO2 uh, contributing factor. So our footprint mostly comes from the travel to the venue. Unfortunately, snow isn't always in the cities and uh, less and less so. Uh, we have to travel more to the snow and all our spectators and our fans must also come to the snow. Um, and that's that's the kind of partnership approach where um, we need to partner with both the fans and, and partners and uh, sponsors to find solutions to reduce that impact. Um, what we are currently working on is with our 28 organizers, uh, that's our current high level series number of organizers, to help them understand their carbon footprint. And what's coming back to us, it's I mean, in most cases, uh, a very large percentage, way over half, will come from um, the transport, the transport of the spectators, the transport of fans to the site, but also the teams and the organizing committee's own uh, travel and transit efforts. So at the same time, we need the fans then to participate and to help us in this reduction effort. We've heard a lot about avoiding. We can't avoid everything. Um, the next thing then is reducing or reducing at least the impact of of that transit and travel. And um, we've been speaking a lot with our fans via a survey. We've conducted an annual survey um, uh, on an annual basis now, and that's where we get the information what's important to the fans. So last year, for example, they told us that um, we have to take responsibility for climate. Uh, they themselves consider climate to 87% apparently in their decisions. And uh, this year we asked them, okay, what would you be willing to do to help us on um, taking action on climate and uh, creating uh, maybe awareness within your own family. And that's what we then ended up hearing. The, the answer was they would be willing to do quite a few things. But one of the things that really was interesting to us was the fact that they would, would like to maybe participate in a challenge. And that's what we have just finished actually yesterday, 7 p.m. last night. Um, <laughs> we finished what we call the Biathlon Climate Challenge. And that was wow. a very exciting uh, project that launched on Earth Day, but started on 1st of May. So we actually ended up spending two and a half weeks working together with our fans. Approximately 8,000 fans have actively participated. And what this the challenge is, is basically a way for the fans to contribute, to make a contribution to Mother Nature and, and against climate change. And the, the way they did that was to actually sign up on an on a platform, an app called Active Giving. And I believe the Active Giving team is actually listening to this conference today. So hey, Laurent, um, hey, Till, um, thank you very much for your support and making this happen. So basically the, the fans have downloaded this app and what, the, what they needed to do is to do some kind of a sporting activity. Uh, if you went for a run, 5K run, you could earn a tree. And our goal was 100,000 trees. And as I said last night, we excitedly, actually received uh, reached our goal of 100,000 trees um, collected by our fans in being active. So that was basically doing good, um, doing sports at the same time. Um, and what I have to say that this wouldn't have been possible without the active participation of our fans, but also our athletes, because what the fans did as well, they joined a team, each team, 10 teams led by a champion from the biathlon world. Uh, they all represented 10 different nations in addition. And obviously we have to have the support of the athletes and their federations to make this very quite complicated construct work. But we are really happy to say that it's it's 
been a very successful initiative for us to raise awareness. I think it's been said a few times today that awareness raising is the first step to behavioral change. And that's what we all have to aim at is changing behavior on an individual level, but then institutional level and hopefully eventually at the systemic level. So just an example of things that we have taken um, action on uh, on an IF level, um, but obviously it would not be a possibility without the participation of all our stakeholders. Thank you so much. Thank you so much to, to all of you. Unfortunately, we have to uh, wrap up that, that last uh, round table. Uh, before we put an end to this conference, um, maybe we can have a look at Mara's drawing. Yeah, we, we're going to see that. Thank you so much to our panelists this morning. Thank you, Valerio, Barbara, Rika, Amandine. Thanks to, thanks to you.